Hello, I'm Matt Presti, cosmologist, musician, and philosopher. Welcome to Knowing the Creator 101. In this episode, we will be covering meditation, prayer, and more specifically, the principles behind these processes for developing techniques to commune or hold conference with the universal mind. The prime actuality of matter and motion is a state of equilibrium or rest, as was laid out in the first episode. All electric motions begin and end in stillness, silence, and rest. The still magnetic light of mind is the fulcrum of all electric motions. There are no vibrations whatsoever to the spirit. The light of the spirit is absolutely motionless, while the vibrations of matter increase with density and decrease as they approach the stillness of space. Before we unfold the process of tapping into the prime actuality, I must clarify what I feel to be a misleading and misdirected concept in the so-called New Age movement concerning the assertion that one must raise their vibration as some sort of end goal. We have to be discerning and not afraid to unshackle our approach to gaining wisdom and understanding, especially in this time of intended or even unintended universal deceit. In this series, we are not afraid to shine the light on faulty approaches to understanding our universality and deepening our awareness of true universal law and process. We will hasten our unfoldment with the removal of mantric obstacles based on sensory illusions and misrepresentations. The language of light must be precise and expressed with as great a clarity as possible. Doing so is a simplification through simplification, we unfold unification. So let's begin. Firstly, we should break down the word vibrate. From the Latin, vi means force, vibratus, to move to and fro, vibration, a shaking, a brandishing. So when someone advises us to raise our vibrations, this is not only counterintuitive, it is impractical. Those who use the phrase, raise your vibrations, simply have not thought things through. Let me demonstrate why. Here we have a wave recording software called Pro Tools. You can see it is registering a zero equilibrium, silence, or motionless state as there is no vibration. When I start the music, however, the waveform moves from the zero state of rest to extremely high vibrations which register as peaks and troughs. I have effectively raised the vibrations of an otherwise normal state of rest. Yet another example would be an earthquake. When the earth is in a normal state of rest, we have a peaceful condition. 
However, when the earth begins to quake, it quickly leaves the state of stillness into a higher vibration of faster, shorter waves, which creates destruction. We know that the radioactive elements are extremely vibratory. Indeed, they vibrate so high that they unwind their cores in a super fast centrifugal motion in their desire to return to stillness. The emission of ultraviolet rays are an example of the danger of fast short waves with a high vibration as can be seen in this graph. We all know the dangers of too much radiation such as UV, gamma, and x-rays. As human bodies, we are not designed to vibrate or move as fast as radioactive elements and may actually violate our normalcy through such a pursuit or intermingling. More examples of raised vibrations would be what mankind calls a fever. This is akin to a violent radioactive condition of the human body. The faster the motion, the more heat is given off toward disintegrating the body on a cellular level. One can certainly achieve stillness via death by increasing their vibrations in this fashion, but I would rather stay with the time-tested and functional modalities that have worked for thousands of years to increase mindfulness. In this sense, more stillness through less vibration equates to more mindfulness or more knowing and less sensing. The two go hand in hand. You cannot sense your way to God. This is why materialist science is still 1,000 years away from that day of discovery of our Creator. So ultimately, we must be discerning when someone advises us to raise our vibrations in an attempt to gain greater awareness. The more we vibrate, the further away from the Creator we get. To attempt to reach the Creator through raising vibrations would mean tearing our molecular structure apart to do so. Great awareness from the human perspective comes from desiring stillness. Few people on earth can effectively meditate while doing jumping jacks, running or talking. That is why we see the kinds of still postures in prayer and meditation. They are absolutely more effective than trying to get your body or brain to increase vibrations. Knowledge is not a vibration and would be better understood if it was conveyed as an awareness of stillness and silence within oneself. Truth be told, the wisest people in the world know to lower their vibration to the eternal zero of rest in a safe and effective way, which is directly proportional to an increase of awareness or knowledge, creativity and performance, we should discard the use of the phrase, raise your vibration, as it is antithetical to true meditation and prayer. Meditation is the desire of man to know the universal one in him and manifest his God awareness by extending his knowing through his thinking. This underlies the production of material bodies created by inspired mankind, the attaining of peace in one's life and daily activities, the reduction of stress, better job performance, relationships, health and healing, as well as many other useful physical expressions inspired by one's desire within. Meditation is a desire to be alone with God, to talk with Him in the language of light through the stillness of the heart. The total relaxation from all mental and physical strains, which comes from stopping your thinking and knowing the ecstasy of the Creator through direct communion insulates one's body and mind from any and all ailments of the body and other outside sources. Meditation transports you from the world of sensing into the world of knowing. This practice eventually leads to the state known as waking meditation, which means continuous God awareness which leads one into the higher and higher heavens of the figurative mountaintop while insulating you from the body, from mental and physical ills. When you have formed the habit of constant communion with God, you will then not have to make any conscious effort or seek the quiet of nature's environment to induce it. 
It will become a working habit, a fixed habit of working knowingly with God under any circumstances. Quite possibly, the simplest way to describe entering this abode of timelessness and stillness is with the following example. Decentration. Decentration, the opposite of concentration, is a term coined by the Russells, which means inward thinking, forgetting the body, desiring the light within, dissolving, encompassing, and immersing oneself into the light of universal God-mind. Through the process of decentration, we unwind our bodily concentrations, slowing them down at first, then eventually into stillness and silence, which is the universal equilibrium. A cosmic thinker can instantly decentrate to the zero of the light of all knowing, whether he is in a subway or in a forest. Concentration is best thought of as fast, tight light waves of thought, a large amount of mental focus in one place. Concentration is required for commanding precision through techniques utilized by the raised vibrational brain or body during intense physical demands like sports, expressing passions like painting, sculpting, or musical composition, writing of plays, poems, and essays, on the job training, taking a test, or learning rote information within a school or university system. It works the same way over many different applications and fulfills its purpose quite well when needed. Yet, it is only one half of the piston stroke. Together, like all motion in the universe, it is a two-way process. Decentration begets concentration, which must rest to begin yet again. This process is cyclical. It is the universal heartbeat underlying all of creation. Concentration is the unwinding breath of creation, whereas decentration is the unwinding breath. To be within that timeless ecstatic state of knowing is to be in tune with the infinite. God is all that is. You are all that is. In meditative communion with God, you become aware of that. God's eternally creating universe is the result of his eternally continuous meditation and desire to manifest idea. In meditation, you step out of the material you into the spiritual you, out of the body of yourself into the mind of yourself, out of the conditioned universe of divided and unbalanced things into the unconditioned and undivided universe of equilibrium which controls temporality. Understanding that thinking is electric, but electricity is not knowledge. It is but the motivating power for expressing knowledge. Your brain is electric matter, just electric waves, which all matter is. Matter does not think, nor does it know. You do not know with your brain. You express your knowing through it. The process called meditation reveals to man slowly that knowledge is a quality of the universal mind and not of matter, nor the brain. Matter records knowledge. All matter is motion only, electric wave vibrations of motion. Electric vibrational matter is the servant of mind. Electricity is the tool used by God and mankind alike to fashion mind conceptions into form. However, the tool used by any creator is not the creator. Your meditations are spiritual. You interpret them into matter electrically. The physical universe of matter is but the electric record of thoughts of mind, but it is not the thought. It might as well be said that instead of our brains aiding in meditation, we meditate in spite of our brains. For perfect meditation, you need to lose your body, to forget it as though you have no body. There are many techniques to aid in your meditations. Whatever works for you to stop thinking and know will become your personal process.
Developing this process takes more decentration and less concentration. Meditation is not merely for relaxing, acquiring a state of ecstasy or bliss, and peace for yourself alone. For the nature of this universal one mind is purposeful. You will unfold your understanding of your own purpose through meditation, which will give you the power to express your knowledge gained in the light of mind to your fellow mankind for their cultural uplifting. World cultural uplift comes only from those who have God awareness in them. Without God awareness in man, culture becomes a corpse of itself, taking mankind backward to the darkness of his primal beginnings. Through meditation, you will begin to emanate your knowing through creative expression, not mere repetition. Knowledge is the basis of creation. To become knowingly a creator is to achieve the highest pinnacle of human expression, which alters the cultural constructs of civilization. This is how we uplift and save the human race from its own destruction. Many are already doing this in the world today. We all have the ability to transform ourselves creatively, which uplifts civilization through knowledge of God's creative process. Prayer is the mightiest of man's powers if understood and rightly used and accompanied by action. Many prayers have been uttered and have gone unanswered due to a lack of understanding the process of creation. In the message of the Divine Iliad, it states, Sit thou and ask not, for unless thou reach out for thy desire, it shall not walk thy way to thee, unaided by thy strong arms. In this promise is the key to why prayers are not answered. For example, one may ask God for peace, happiness, and prosperity to be given them, but they are taking peace, happiness, and prosperity away from their neighbor, friend, co-worker, employee, or family member through their own actions of gossiping, misrepresenting, or unequal and unbalanced interchangings. Until one balances their desire for peace by giving peace, or happiness by giving happiness, or prosperity by giving prosperity, their prayer will be voided by they themselves. Prayer is just meaningless words, if not felt in the heart, just as music is no more than sound if it does not reach the soul. Prayer to God is a realization that the soul of man is one with the universal soul. It is not an appeal by man to God. It is a communion between the divine man to the divine God of man. Words alone cannot make union with God. Prayer based upon desire and uttered within the soul of man wordlessly or by silent thought will always command the whole universe to fulfill the desire but words alone are not prayer any more than the paint is the art in a picture. He who can say in his heart, I and my Father are one, and feel the ecstasy of that unity is continually in prayer, even as he is continually in life and continually breathing. One must be cautious that their prayers not amount to wishful thinking such as praying for materialistic outcomes like money or success in some endeavor. Wishful thinking will not help you achieve becoming a great concert pianist. Hard work through right action, practice, and development of techniques will, however, with your mind centered in God's mind as one. To achieve the desires of your prayers and meditations in this world, requires that they be balanced by action. In the next episode, we will cover in great detail the process of unfolding your desire into a formed body. To know this process of creation will bring you closer to understanding God's ways and processes in the building of bodies. We may all view the supreme creation of the Creator. That is what mankind calls nature. Thank you for joining me. I'm Matt Presti. Until next time.